Hello, good evening. The number of pupils excluded from Scottish schools for assaults using weapons is at a five-year high. According to official figures, there were 739 incidents in the year 2016-17, as Joanne McCauley reports. 16-year-old Bailey Gwynn died after a fight with a fellow pupil at Cult Academy in Aberdeen in 2015. He was fatally stabbed and his killer is now serving nine years for culpable homicide. After his death, there were numerous recommendations on how to prevent similar incidents and pupils across Aberdeen were given anti-weapons lessons. But the latest figures show a rise in the number of young people who've been excluded from school because of violent incidents. In 2012 to 13, there were 710 violent exclusions. Two years later, that figure had dropped to 661. But the latest figures show there were 311 instances of pupils being excluded for using a weapon and a further 428 violent incidents involving improvised weapons, making a total of 739. I think we need to ensure that teachers have sufficient support uh, to be dealing with this sort of issue. Uh, I think the pupils, there need to be early interventions with the pupils because the consequences to these pupils uh, of being caught of using these weapons by mistake uh, are very serious. These statistics have got to be viewed within the context of a 64% reduction in crimes involving a weapon in the last 10 years and a halving in the rate of exclusions from schools, which demonstrates that behaviour amongst pupils in Scotland's schools is much better today than it was 10 years ago. The Scottish Government says it's continuing to work with schools and councils on anti-violence campaigns. Joanne McCauley, Reporting Scotland. Workers on the North Sea platform claim to have staged an unofficial walkout over alleged poor working conditions. The workers, contracted by Acker Solutions, say they downed tools for four hours this morning. The Mariner development is around 150 kilometres east of Shetland. Acker Solutions says it's received no official notification of the action and is investigating. Scotland's track cyclists have added to the nation's medal tally at the Commonwealth Games in Australia. Scotland now have 15 medals with success in the velodrome and the pool. From the Gold Coast, here's Jane Lewis. Day three in the velodrome promised much. It lived up to expectations. Take the gold medal for Scotland. And it's... Neil Fackey off to a flyer, gold in the visually impaired sprint. We knew we just had to, to absolutely gun it and... Yeah, yeah, just, uh, I'm so, so happy with this. It's just, uh, yeah, a dream come true to defend these titles. Well, that's Neil Fackey's second gold of these games. Would he lead a medal rush here in the velodrome for Scotland on day three of the action? Yes, the answer. In fact, in one race came two medals, a silver for Katie Archibald and a bronze for Nia Evans in the women's 25k points race. It feels fantastic, yeah. Um, especially sort of two days in a row to be still on a podium. Got a whole collection of cuddly toys now, so yeah, feeling elated. Feels really good. Um, I didn't obviously want to come away with a medal, um, and the aim was to try and get two medals yeah. tonight. So we did that, yeah. and we'll try again tomorrow. Not to be left out in his first games, Jack Carlin won silver in the men's sprint. Disappointed a little at the moment that if I told myself I was going to get silver yesterday, I would have taken it. So. Um, yeah, pleased. Enough is enough. And from success in the velodrome to another medal in the pool. Duncan Scott delivered again. A bronze in the 200 metres butterfly, his third medal of these games. Jane Lewis, reporting Scotland, Gold Coast. On to football and Rangers moved back to second place in the Premiership by defeating Dundee, while Aberdeen lost at Hearts. Ross County conceded a late equaliser to Hibbs and bottom side Partick lost to Kilmarnock. Now events are taking place in the borders this weekend to mark the 50th anniversary of the death of the Scottish Formula One champion Jim Clark. Attacks the 212 mile circuit of Nürburgring. Born in Fife and raised in Berwickshire, Clark is still widely rated as one of the most naturally gifted racing drivers. He was 32 when he was killed in a crash in Germany. 
Let's find out what the weather has in store. Judith, set the map for us. Thank you very much, Graham, and a very good evening to you. It uh, turned out to be a largely dry, cloudy day for many of us. Uh, this lovely picture sent in by one of our weather watchers of two otters enjoying the weather. But it did, we did see some sunshine for parts of the West Highlands. This terrific picture sent in from Glen Elg in the Northern Isles saw some sunshine as well. However, all change later this afternoon as we saw this rain moving up from the south. You can see from the earlier radar. That rain is lying across parts of the south and the central lowlands as we speak, but it will continue to journey northwards as we head through the evening and the overnight period, becoming confined to the far north and the northern Isles, then becoming dry. We'll see some clear spells in the east and we'll see some fairly extensive mist developing tonight and also some fog patches as well. Overnight lows typically of around 5 Celsius, but down to around 1 Celsius for the East Highlands and inland Aberdeenshire. So that mist and fog could be quite stubborn tomorrow morning, but the clouds is thin and break as we head through the day. The rain clears away fairly quickly from the far north, lingering thicker cloud across the far north and the west coast as well, one or two showers too. As far as the rest of the UK is concerned, some sharp showers for Northern Ireland, mainly dry with some sunshine for western areas, but then this weather front introducing rain across the far southeast and temperatures across the board for us certainly on the mild side at 12 or 13 Celsius. Into tomorrow evening, we'll see one or two showers initially, then becoming predominantly dry. We're between two weather fronts on Monday, which means plenty of dry weather for the start of the working week. Cloudier skies in the east, the best of sunshine in the west, and highs of 12 or 13 Celsius. That's your forecast. Graham. Still waiting for spring. Judith, We're thank coming. you for that. And that's reporting Scotland for now. There's more tomorrow evening at 10 to 6. From all of us on the team, have a good night. Bye-bye.